Patrol, eight major towns, and a population of over a million, Cheshire police cars clock up an astonishing 12 million miles a year. So it's no wonder they get into a few scrapes. And keeping this fleet of cars, riot vans, boats and bikes on the road. That's as close as you get into a siren on a bicycle. Is the job of the vehicle maintenance unit. If Cheshire police need to get a beat car back on the road, they'll repair it. It's like the emergency services version of a Formula One pit stop, does If they need a new riot van, they'll design it. And if they want something that doesn't exist yet, they'll invent it. I need to turn that into that. <laughs> if Cheshire Police were James Bond, these guys are cute. Would you want to be sat that close with an ugly window? Welcome to Cop Car Workshop. It's a typical Monday morning at the garage. You're going to get this crack today, aren't you? It's all being well. Never mind all being well. Need it going out. Everyone's got their foot on the gas, dealing with bashes and crashes, builds and breakdowns. Where are the keys? But there's something a little out of kilter. Good morning, Fleet Services. Dave speaking. Yeah, I'll check on that. Second in command Dave has been forced to man the front desk. Uh, we've got quite a few members of staff off, so I'm just down here covering all the busiest period of the day. Sorry, I can just barely hear you. We always get, you know, problems that have occurred over the weekend, so breakdowns and other faults with vehicles that all come in on a Monday morning. Yeah, it's going on the ramp with sort of in the next half hour. It's a few years since I've sat down here. Hiya, John. Fortunately, I've not had any major head scratches yet. What's the registration number, please? Just bear with me one moment. Gold Audi. Sam, just give me your number and let me let me just go and look into that and I'll call you back in a few minutes. So, Dave, you'll be looking for a gold Audi in a workshop full of white cop cars? Yeah, I, absolutely. It's ridiculous that we have to, you know, chase cars around. We, we could do with a the tracking system on them so we know where they are, you know. But, yeah, I'll let you know as soon as we've resolved this. What were you saying about head scratches, Dave? If it can go wrong, it'll go wrong on a Monday, won't it? Finding a missing car might be slow going for Dave, but down in the workshop, one of the fleet's top traffic cars is in the fast lane to be assessed. Uh, this has been in a pursuit, and as we were going along, it just went bang and ground to a halt, and a load of engine parts fell onto the under tray. It's uh, one of our traffic cars, so it'll be in pursuit quite regularly, and it just didn't like this one. For the big wheel in the garage, John Hoosey, the BMW Interceptor, is his high-performance car of choice. So this is very much the flagship of our fleet, the HMS Victory, if you like. The best. The people who we have to go after often will be in a high-speed car. And if we're going to go after the bad guys, we need high-powered vehicles. They will go really, really fast. It's a very, very dangerous place. And it's mechanic Daz's job to start the diagnosis on this wounded champion of the road. If he can't get it back on the beat, it'll need replacing at breakneck speed. It's speed all its oil. And if you look up there, just behind the turbo, there's a rather large hole in the side of the engine. Could be wear and tear, lack of oil, a breakdown in some component. And to find out, Darren will need to take a closer look. Right, I'm just going to whip the injector out and stick the bore scope down there, see if we can see what's going on from the top. It's basically a camera on the end of a flexible piece of wire with a little light on it, and you get a picture on here. It is a useful bit of kit to have. Uh, we've seen something down there sat on top of the piston. It looks like Darren's got a problem to chew on while Dave's still spinning plates on the front desk. OK, cheers, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, Dave speaking. Uh, let me look at the email again. It's just after 11, but all this hard work is making him think about one thing. I don't know. I don't know whether to do Subway salad or go to Tesco, the sensible thing to do, and get their meal deal for three quid. And 
then add on two packs of sushi to take it to a five, and then sit there thinking, Christ, I wish I hadn't eaten all that. Just, I think myself lucky there's not a KFC in the town, because otherwise... You'd have to wheel me to my car every night. Dave set the wheels in motion for his lunch break. But in the workshop, John's interceptor looks like it's ground to a halt. That's it for that. 105,000 miles. Game over. It's terminal. Um, the engines are very expensive in these cars, uh, and it is a five-year-old car. Uh, as a result of that, that, that's the end of its service life with us. Having one or two of these mean machines off the road is a major headache for Sergeant Andy Jones of the Road Policing Unit. There's always times when you have all your cars on the road and everything's fine, and you have other days where one's been damaged and another one's due a service at the same time, and that puts strain on the vehicles that are left. Beneath all the hot car modifications, the Interceptor is a high-performance BMW 330. Worked hard and fast, John needs to be quick off the mark to replace these powerhouses. It's got everything you need. Horsepower, three-litre straight-six engine, twin-turbo. It's got a close-ratio eight-speed gearbox. It's got searing acceleration. Well, that's just as well, John, but you've still got to turn it from this blank canvas to this. There's an awful lot of work that goes into them. We've got the latest light bar, the latest sound system, and the fact that the converters have to take the, the car right to pieces to build it all in. It'll also be kitted out with a multitude of equipment to deal with road policing. Road right, traffic lights, vehicle is failing to stop. Including something called a stinger to stop high-speed getaways. Yeah, the superman with the vehicle has been stolen and it's now back towards Chester. The stinger is basically a, a bed of nails uh, and depending on the type of incident, a stinger officer will um, deploy the stinger um, across the carriageway with a view of deflating as many tyres as possible. Sometimes cop cars do get caught up in it um, and actually members of the public do as well, but it's, uh, we try and time it well. PC Dan Halliwell remembers a particular stinger deployment when he was involved in a high-speed chase to stop a stolen vehicle. I've joined onto the roundabout and it's come flying past me. Speed is 18, Looks like there's three, four on board. The most important thing is, is obviously you stay calm, because um, if you get that red mist, then mistakes are going to start happening. To avoid a dangerous chase through the town, the tactical team needed to stop the vehicle. As we got closer to a traffic light junction, um, Stinger was deployed. Stand by. Stinger deployed. I was the, the front car, so I ended up coming in front of the, the subject car, um, and there was a, a slight rear end shunt. But that was the least of his worries. As I detained the driver, um, me and my colleagues were, were sort of flabbergasted as to why there was a scream coming from the car. Unfortunately, it was a, a, a bunch of kids that just thought it'd be a good idea to, to jump in the boot and ride along and not have any idea that they'd end up in a high-speed pursuit with police. What could have happened if that car had crashed, um, you know, it would be without a shadow of a doubt looking at a fatal. The 17-year-old driver was convicted of dangerous driving, disqualified for 12 months, and given a rehabilitation order. The pursuit vehicle of choice, the 330 Interceptor, always ready for action. But the cops have to be too and their skills are honed on the racetrack. Uh, so we're at uh, Alton Park Race Circuit and we're doing a stinger exercise. As a fleet manager, I want to see what our vehicles do, what they get up to. It helps me with designing and providing the right vehicles for the job. We've got the team here who's going to deploy the stinger. What people don't realise about these stingers, of course, is they're not just spikes, they're actually tubes that snap off and remain in the tyre. It allows the air to come out quite fast, so it'll bring the vehicle to a halt uh, a lot quicker, of course. All units are in position. We've got a subject car waiting uh, for the go. As soon as I give him the go-ahead, uh, he'll be driving towards us. Of course, with the interceptors in hot pursuit of him. The track is clear. <laughs> 
and they're off. What we hope to happen is the subject car goes over the stinger, um, and as a result of that, four beautiful punctures and the guy comes to a halt. Quick off the mark, the getaway driver has an advantage. The Stinger team only have seconds to react. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Precision execution brings our driver to a halt, leaving the interceptors to contain the car. In slow motion, you can see how little time there is to use the stinger before damaging other vehicles on the road. This is why training is crucial. Fantastic. Perfect timing on the uh, stinger. Um, hit him straight across all of the wheels. The interceptors are either side. See what we've done? Uh, we've boxed him in and said, you know what, mate, we've got you. So who is this buddy that's inside the car? Oh, God, that face, that face fits the bill, doesn't it, hey? <laughs> And it's Dave, the car thief, giving the officers a run for their money. It looked really, really good. You were over that stinger at speeds. He got that stinger out just in time for you to get all four wheels on it. Just, just shows how good the interceptors are, mate, doesn't it? Good, uh, good exercise uh, all round, really. And you know what? Not a panel hanging off anywhere. No, just, um, <laughs> just going to change me on <laughs> With over 750 police vehicles to keep fighting fit, it's always a hive of activity at the garage. And where is everyone? What's it like? It's like being home alone. Now you wonder to to yourself. I've always wondered why you talk to yourself, <laughs> mate. The mechanics in the workshop may have gone AWOL, but that's not the only thing bosses John and Dave are missing. Oh, right, OK, then. So we've got an aerial missing. It's another interceptor in for repair. This one needs the aerials fixed on its tracker system. So there's two aerials at the back. There should be two aerials at the front. I'll find one of them. Uh, for yeah. that. You know what they do, though, don't you? You put them through the bloody car wash. Yeah. This clever bit of kit helps crack down on car theft. Fit a tracker system to your motor, and if it's nicked, the cops will be onto it. When the stolen car gets within... Uh, range of a police car, it'll start to ping and it shows which direction the stolen car is in and also uh, an approximate distance away that that vehicle is so the officer can start heading towards and the pings will get closer together as they get near them. If it's in our vicinity, we're going to see it, we're going to find it. Finding mechanics in the workshop might be hard, but hunting down criminals in a stolen vehicle just got easier. With only 53% of stolen vehicles recovered across the UK, Sergeant Jones is determined to use the tracking system to help fight road crime. So his team need to be up to speed. Right, today um, we've got various cars fitted with tracker. Um, I'm going to take the tracking train device out, turn it on, and basically see if they can find us. This is just one of our unmarked road policing cars, and it's just going to play the part of the stolen vehicle we want to locate. It'll be a game of cat and mouse. One unmarked and three marked vehicles will have to hunt this criminal down. I've sent them to various locations. And they're going to wait the call, because I'm not going to turn the device on until I'm out there. Otherwise, they're just going to be cheating and wait for me to drive out HQ and follow me. Once in position, the police squad get their intel. It's a uh, BMW, five series in black. Stolen from Chester in the last half hour. I was just picking up the vehicle mission. We'll get into this um, role acting. <laughs> Even though this is a training exercise, it's invaluable. An incredible 85,000 cars a year get stolen in England and Wales. Crime does always evolve, doesn't it? And criminals get try and keep ahead of the game, and it's the police's responsibility to keep up with that. Certainly, the, the net is closing in on car criminals. But unlike the car crooks, the Sarge has an advantage. He knows he's in a tracked vehicle and can listen to all radio comms. Yeah, we're on the uh, And he's not going to make it easy. We're going to do a bit more urban, where you do get problems with the buildings can interfere with signals. And it's PC Gamble who gets the first alert. 
We're also just on road one roundabout, picked up the Signal Charlie Hotel Echo 04. And this is very similar to what would happen in a, in a live job. Units are starting to get this information. It's just a matter of not rushing it and making sure that we achieve the number one aim, which is to not have a pursuit with this vehicle and recover the vehicle. Tango 41, still got a signal. I'm on Wharton Road. It's direct to me, general area of Winsford Town Centre. And that's exactly where we are, Wharton Road. Yeah, we're picking up a signal now. Uh, currently on road one, heading towards the A5016. So another car's now got a signal. The vehicles are closing in. So we've now got three cars of the four who've got a signal. Basically, three of them are in effect on our tail. Just getting a, a medium to strong signal at the roundabout the bottom of Winsford by DB's nightclub. But they're nearer to their target than they think. Um, right, it's passing us opposite now. They should have had a signal because they've just gone straight past us. He's behind you. So we'll virtually drive past him on the other side of the road. Oh no, he's not. Almost tease him. We're not part of the DB now. Right, yeah, there's a car. Oh the yes, he is. Car. He's just passed us. So it's back behind us now. The fact is that we keep picking this signal up is encouraging that um, we're obviously in the right place at the right time. It's just now a matter of being patient. So one car's just passed us, one car's as to up there. Sending us this general direction. Hotel Tango 41 picked up a strong signal, A54, heading towards Middlewich. But as the vehicles swoop in, this criminal just can't keep up his game. Yep, yeah, it's in the bit. Elder driver. <laughs> Chris puts his foot on the gas, and working as a team, the unmarked car pulls out in front of the stolen vehicle. Operating a safe traffic maneuver to bring it to a halt. And Sergeant Jones's verdict? All in all, I think it, you know, it's certainly a worthwhile exercise, worthwhile day training, and in the end, we got the car. And that's why they're called interceptors. But with nine older models and 16 newer 330s, every one counts. The interceptors are by far the pride of the fleet. These super detectives are kitted with ANPR, or automatic number plate recognition systems. Forward-facing camera, uh, they can see number plates and read them on vehicles ahead. Rearward facing camera for doing the same. The uh, tablet in the middle of the dashboard displaying it to the driver. The car really is the travelling police station. Who needs a desk anyway? This car can do it all. We have the matrix sign in the rear and we can send up to 30 preloaded messages. This is great for giving that information to the oncoming motorist. But this road warrior is expected to carry a multitude of armory. Here's the stinger, here's the cones, here's all of the signs and the other stuff that they use. Even water nowadays for potential acid attacks. It might hold a lot of equipment, but the boots are tip, and it's a design headache John wants to iron out, along with the constant updates, tweaks and modifications that come with every new build. We want the best of the light bars. We want the best and the latest AMPR. How are we going to make that the best? It's like we've started with a blank sheet of paper. We've looked at all of the headaches that was with the old vehicles, designed them out, but also designed some great usefulness on top of that. But it seems someone's left their own modification. <laughs> Poor old one. <laughs> suits, it suits it a bit, doesn't it? The traffic unit will be plodding along at this rate, John. <laughs> it's time to get cracking with the newest interceptor conversion at BMW Thorn. Starting with the heart of this speed demon. And that's the speedo out. Remove the speedometer and get it calibrated to make sure there's 100% accuracy. <laughs> Do you want to refit it? Go for it, son. It's important for the police to know exactly how fast they're going and exactly how fast anyone else is going. 
Once the main organ is beating to the right calibration, the mechanics can make the insides criminal proof. This isn't standard, it's a very, very, very thick load guard. It's just to prevent criminals from getting from the rear seats into anything at the store in the back, so there could be anything for any roadside accidents, tools for entering vehicles or entering houses. They're fitted with the bolts away from the passengers, so there's no chance of them being removed. A lot of the things we do on these vehicles are mainly for officer safety and to help officers to use the vehicles as a tool in a day-to-day -to -day job to make it just that little bit easier. While the interceptor build continues, back at the VMU, second-in-command Dave doesn't have his hands in a toolbox. Unlock the Merry Biscuit Grotto to win. But in the biscuit tin. Ooh. Put in a life supply of biscuits, eh? It's just a food machine. And if he has the biscuit tin open, he's there. It's like a little child at a cupboard. You can hear it rustling. Admin team Ros and Tracy take pains to keep their own supply safe from prying hands. <laughs> I have a drawer full of sweeties, and we have a cupboard full of sweets. It's not as stocked up as it normally is. We have an all-you-can-eat Friday, and Dave goes to Chinese, or sometimes they'll have pizza. It normally is, involves a takeaway of some description. Can I just say yeah. that all-you-can-eat Fridays is very rare for me. Just like to get that out there, I'm not the all-you-can-eat girl. Coming up, all-you-can-eat Fridays here. Don't tell the wife. But there's something on the menu causing a stink. It's not uh, firing properly, and it's creating this horrible smell. With the vehicle maintenance unit full of gas guzzlers and gassy guzzlers, the staff are used to a bit of a whiff. Lovely smell. But today, a riot van has been brought in as the officers got a sniff that something wasn't quite right. Yeah, they've complained of the smell inside the vehicle. The smell's carrying through, and uh, it's not very pleasant. So, uh, so we'll just do a bit of investigation and uh, see what we can find out, see if we can stop it. It's a key vehicle missing from an ongoing covert operation, but there's nothing undercover about the pong it's emitting. And John is keen to see if Darren's found the source. This will be one of our older models that we're, we're looking at. Um, I'll see where he is. So we're, we're just having a look at it now to see how big a job is it and what we can do about repairing it. Or indeed, are we going to have to put another vehicle in its place uh, for use? Right, go on, Mark. Yeah. Time to do the sniff test. Lock it up, Mark. But it's not coming out smelling of roses. It's not uh, firing properly. And it's creating this horrible smell. You get something like that. And it just solidifies. But the solution is going to be to clean all this out. And then we'll put some new injector seals in it. And hopefully, that will cure it. The clock's against them, though. This fan's got to be back, and John needs a solution. Quick. Go we'll see how Tim's doing with these um, radio builds, because it could well be that we put a new vehicle uh, out. It's, it's right at its end, anyway. Let's see what we can do. There's a brand new riot van currently being customised in the garage. What's up with you? But technician Tim is having a genuine 21st century problem with it. Would we mount it here? Yeah. And there's absolutely no inker cable fitted in there at all. You've been all around it. Yeah, absolutely. Had it all out. Oh, oh, it's disappointing that. The vehicle's come through, and uh, the cable or the data cable to connect to the inker uh, doesn't seem to have been installed in the vehicle. The inker is the black box of all police vehicles, recording locations and driver performance during all operations. We've got to make that difficult decision, really. Are we going to issue the vehicle temporarily without the Inca working? Uh, or, indeed, uh, are we going to get Tim to put a data cable in and get it running, for which he's, going to t he's told us that uh, it's going to be three to four hours? The operation is desperate for a van. But for now, the old and the new are going nowhere.
John's new 330 Interceptor, on the other hand, is becoming less Clark Kent and more Superman by the hour. It's a lot of pieces, but they're all numbered up as to where to line them up, so as long as you're keeping the lines fairly straight, it's not too bad. The car is deep in its transformation at specialist garage Coleman Milne. So Anthony at the moment is in the back here and he's doing all the tracker stuff. It's full speed ahead with John's list of customizations. It's got a QRO system on it. Um, Chesh is the only one that uses it that I know of. It's like a tablet. You know, instead of having a, a screen that's permanently mounted, they can actually remove this tablet so they can take it with them. So it's kind of like the next step up in technology, really. Inside, all the dashboard's been stripped out completely. Then you'll have all your radio system here. From top to bottom, inside out, this BMW has been redesigned. This is the interior of the car. Uh, every, every bit we've taken out all goes on the shelf, so nothing will get lost, nothing will get damaged. There's about a day and a half, two more days left of work, that's it. Cheshire Police may be gearing up for their newest interceptor, but in the workshop, they're getting ready for another event. Oh, can eat Friday. Come on, best day of the week. What are we doing? Yeah, are you having it? I will, yeah. Starving. Well, it all started off as eat what you like Friday. Then someone changed it to all you can eat Friday. Um, the lads in the workshop call it Fat Friday. Fat Friday, that's lunchtime today. You know, we have tough weeks here. So it's just a matter of, um, you know, picking something downright bad for you. Where we'd probably go to the Chinese or McDonald's or wherever for a kebab, maybe. Come on. And it's Dave's fault, completely and utterly Dave's fault. Uh, and he said, you know what, we'll start uh, something on the Fridays and we'll, we'll have something nice to round the week off. Fish and chips. Twice. A small hot curry. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, please. Anything else? Yeah, I'll have a fish cake while I'm waiting, please. Just to make it clear, you're having a fish cake while you're waiting for your order, Dave? Don't tell the wife. Well, at least you've got the diet pop in, though. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, it's sorted. See, look at that. Health in a box. Yeah, absolutely. That's gorgeous, that, Dave. That's really, really healthy. <laughs> There's nothing unhealthy in this, is there? It's grilled chicken and salad. Mm -hmm. And a bit of bread. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can eat Friday. God, I mean, let's face it. How long will it be until you have another meal? Oh, I was thinking it about half two, actually. <laughs> I might find the biscuit tin. All right, OK. He's already had his hands in the tin, John. A guy that I used to have lunch with in my last job, when I spoke to him, a year after I left, he said he'd lost a stone and a half since I left the business. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the chippy runs. Well, he hadn't taken up jogging, that's probably yeah, right. <laughs> Friday, also one of the busiest days on the job. Got to get those hot cars out before the weekend. Including one of those riot vans. It's desperate to go out today, yeah, because they've just lost a couple. An ongoing covert operation urgently needs a support van, and John needs to call the shots. What time's it going to be fixed? But it's not looking good. That is going nowhere fast. Right, OK. I think we shelved that at the moment. It's typical, really, for some of the older vehicles, where it's uh, showing some wear and tear. Sometimes. It's just gone past saving and they go out and that's it. There's better news at the other end of the garage. Yeah. Just bringing the cable through now, see? Tim has worked a bit of magic to produce the right data cable. There's the inker. And this is the cable that was uh, missing in the first place. So we're nearly ready to rock and roll. Finally, with the inker box installed, Tim just needs to give it a once-over. We're going to go on outside, and once they've received GPS information, we know that the system's working fine. We've started to acquire satellites, as you can see on the left-hand side there. And it's rock and roll Tim. This vehicle will go out to the operation that the old vehicle was involved in. Quite happy about that, really. 
if they uh, find out that every vehicle that they put off with a funny smell uh, results in them getting a new vehicle, uh, we'll have to watch that they don't put all the vehicles off the road. After weeks of rewiring, refitting and redesigning, John's back at the specialist converters to sign off his latest interceptor build. Very good. New interceptor. We got it done. Yep. Turns the three. We'll go have a look. From Prince Among Cars to King of the Road, it'll take pride of place on Cheshire's fleet. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful. Do you know, I love them when they're like this. You know, before it goes into its first edge. <laughs> No one else is as good as these. All the big build stuff and small design tweaks have been completed. Front of rear camera. Yeah. AMPR reader unit. Yeah. Full switch panel. Tablet, yeah. Radio. Radio. We've got the tracking unit. 10 out of 10. Could go home in that, mate. Even after 36 years in the biz, John still gets excited about a cop car. This ain't a police car. This is a step above that, isn't it? Mm. Lightweight plastic load carrier. Two sets of cones. Stinger. Pump up signs. Lovely job, that, isn't it? Nice and solid. Yeah. Beautiful. God, man. You never fail to see that, would you? Absolutely amazing. It's something we're really, really proud of. Flipping it, knock it off. I'm chomping at the bit. I want it back at our place, get the number plates on it, and get it out on the road. That's what it's for. Coming up. John's interceptor may go at full pelt. Kick it off a little bit. But it's suddenly brought to a halt. Look at the bloody state of that. It's fast, it's furious, and it's arrived. John's souped up, customised BMW 330 interceptor. Here's a new one, pal. All done, built, finished. Looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Looking nice, like you yep. would do. Ready to be inaugurated into Sergeant Jones's highly skilled traffic team. All in all, beautiful, lovely, untouched yes. by your human hands until you get hold of it. Just uh, let's uh, make sure it comes back for its first service rather than going in ahead, if you do can, mate. Yeah. And it's another new one, and, uh, and that's another old one off the fleet. John's new baby. But it can't stay wrapped up in cotton wool forever. I don't really want to do this, Andy, but uh, here you are. Here's the keys for okay. it. And uh, take this uh, nice thing away. Cheers, and uh, sure. we'll see you soon, pal. Thank you. Take care. It's here, this 258 brake horsepower flagship of the fleet. Have no doubt who's on your tail. The black and yellow bonnet make it crystal clear. This beast carries enough gear to make it a self-sufficient master of the road. A high-tech matrix board communicates to road users. An all-seeing automatic number plate recognition system that doesn't miss a trick. An inbuilt tracker which hunts down stolen vehicles. And an essential onboard office and computer system. The Interceptor, every criminal's worst nightmare. Or is it? If you're a lawbreaker, at least you'll be riding to jail in style. On the go 24-7 and averaging 30 to 40,000 miles a year, this car will be worked hard. And there's no time like the present. To have a new car ready for you on your first shift in, it's a privilege, really. There we go. And PC Gordon Morris, or Gordy, is the lucky guy with the brand spanking new motor. It's got that new car smell. It, it's nice. Um, it's always a bit imposing going out in a brand new car. First time it's ever been driven, so you just take it nice and calm. But if Gordy was hoping to keep the car pristine, the weather has other ideas. The weather conditions are terrible. A um, lot of spray. Now, there, are, there are days when we, we are sent out to target roads, target vehicles target people. Whilst that's not happening, we'll just target anyone that's driving illegally. And his partner in crime, the high-tech interceptor. My rear cameras are covered in lane two behind me. A front camera is now covered in lane three. But it's only a matter of time before all that high-tech kit is put to good use. New vehicle check, please, post out. Chris, can you see where that uh, Galaxy's gone? 
Massa there, isn't it? And we are hit at the roundabout, coming off the 483 um, for no insurance. I'm going to pull in front of it. I'm going to illuminate the pop-up sign. It's going to say follow me on it, and I'm just going to illuminate the rear light and uh, pull in to the lay-by. Activating his matrix board, Gordy sends a clear message to the driver. But to his surprise, the driver ignores him. She's just overtook me. Very nice of her. So it's reds and blues to get her attention. Got insurance on your car. The driver claims to have commercial insurance through her husband's company. Okay. Come and join me in my car. We need to make a phone call. That's all. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Good news. So happy to say that you're covered. But what your husband needs to do right, is get that on the policy schedule. OK? One problem solved. But it's straight on to the next call, assisting in the hunt for a fleeing driver who didn't stop after an ANPR activation. Right, initial pursuit trade. That's it. What happened? He's literally taken a right off full road. Yeah. Marker on the vehicle coming nearby. Lit it up. He's turning, up, turning right onto Mannings Lane South as if he's going to stop. They're just booted it. A black fox all Astra uh, just failed to stop for the panda. He's not super trained, so he's basically just pulled over. Only high-performance vehicles driven by trained cops are allowed to pursue anyone trying to get away. He lets come off the coffee, he'll have to stop. Don't want that going all over the place. Nice new car. There's recent intelligence on the vehicle that's involved in drug dealing and the, the keeper we've got for it apparently has come back, he's disqualified, so probably the main reason why he failed to stop. Watch out someone else isn't going to stop. John's going to have a coronary. Um, there's been no other AMPR activations since then, so it's going to be in and around this estate somewhere. Yeah, I've located the vehicle, hidden around the corner, just off there, on in lane south. The vehicle's been located parked up in a little side street, so that's going to get seized. He'll be found at some point, um, either arrested or reported for disqualified driving. The regular patrol car will take over, freeing up Gordy. And just in the nick of time, he spotted a driver going the wrong way up a slip road. Uh, I've just stopped it before it's going to get up there. Where on earth are you going? Wrong way, you're going up the slip road onto a motorway. The wrong way. Right, spin round, spin round there. Oh, I'll need to speak to you. Quick as you can, don't go all the way, just get round. Got to get up the curb and get round. Stop at the lights. Preventing a potentially hazardous situation, Gordy gets her to the side of the road. Did you realise what you'd done straight away? That way you pulled over to the left? Mm. Right, there's no harm done then. OK. Go ahead. She's got a lot going on at the moment uh, in her personal life with her son and family, so just very upset. She realised what she's done straight away. She just pulled over. I'm not going to prosecute you or anything like that, OK, because there's no harm done. OK? It's just unfortunate for you, I was behind you. So, have a chill out, get some fresh air or something. Yeah. Right, don't start driving until you're happy to do so. But there's no such luxury for this interceptor. We've had an APR hit on a stolen BMW just on the border with North Wales. It appeared that someone's had it up for sale. A known person's come along, said they're going to buy it, took it for a test drive, and I haven't bothered to turn it. Getting into gear, Gordy needs to get on the scene in case they make a run for it. 
decided to kick it off a little bit that they've got onto a traveller's side. Uh, patrol with them now shouting up for room patrols. Down here somewhere, isn't it? There we go. It's a permanent traveller's site. Got firearms here. It seems these criminals have been caught red-handed. So you have no address. Where do you normally sleep? Are you staying on this caravan site at the minute? Uh, it's a confirmed stolen car. It's a male that was driving. I believe he's got no driving licence and he's wanted anyway for motion offences. So, uh, two in custody. been a busy shift for the interceptor. Five to four, due off shortly. Good day all round. Car's done well. Last thing we do with this, before we put it to bed, is give it a wash, uh, ready for whoever's going to take it out next. The AMPR interceptor is something that we're really, really proud of. We've put a lot of work into it. And yeah, OK, we're giving over our brand new beautiful cars and they're going to go out there but there's no such luxury for this interceptor. We've had an APR hit on a stolen BMW just on the border with North Wales. It appeared that someone's had it up for sale. A, a known person's come along, said they're gonna buy it, took it for a test drive and hasn't bothered to turn it. Getting into gear, Gordy needs to get on the scene in case they make a run for it. It's kicking off a little bit, but they've got onto a traveller's side. Uh, patrol with them now, shouting up for room patrols. Down here somewhere, isn't it? There we go. It's a permanent traveller's site. Got firearms here. It seems these criminals have been caught red-handed. Have no address. Where do you normally sleep? Are you staying on this caravan site at the minute? Uh, it's a confirmed stolen car. It's a male that was driving. I believe he's got no driving license and he's wanted anyway for motion offences. So uh, two in custody. It's been a busy shift for the interceptor. Five to four. Due off shortly. Good day, all round. Car's done well. Last thing we do with this, before we put it to bed, is give it a wash, uh, ready for whoever's going to take it out next. The AMPR interceptor is something that we're really, really proud of. We've put a lot of work into it. 